फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट दिस कोर्ट इन जेके प्राइवेट लिमिटेड वर्सेस न्यू केसर अ हिंद एस पी जी एंड डब्ल्यू वी जी कंपनी लिमिटेड हैज हेल्ड दैट वंस अ वाइंडिंग अप ऑर्डर इज पास्ट द असेट्स ऑफ द कंपनी अंडर लिक्विडेशन आर पास्ट अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ द लिक्विडेटर हुज स्टैचुटरी ड्यूटी इज टू रियलाइज दैम देर आफ्टर द क्रेडिटर्स आर पेड आउट बाय द लिक्विडेटर फ्रॉम द सेल प्रोसीड्स ऑफ द असेट्स ऑफ द लिक्विडेटेड कंपनी द क्रेडिटर्स हैव टू बी पेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ द वोटर फॉल और प्रायोरिटी मकैनिज्म देयर फॉर पेमेंट हैज टू बी फर्स्ट मेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ सेक्शन फाइव हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी नाइन ऑफ द कंपनीज एक्ट टू ओवर राइडिंग प्रेफरेंशियल क्रेडिटर्स देन टू प्रेफरेंशियल क्रेडिटर्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ सेक्शन फाइव हंड्रेड थर्टी ऑफ द कंपनीज एक्ट एंड लास्टली पेमेंट हैज टू बी मेड एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड पारी पासु अमंग द ऑर्डिनरी और अनसिक्योर्ड क्रेडिटर्स दिस ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड इंटेंट इज ऑल्सो अपारेंट वैन वी एग्जामिनिंग द कंपनी कोर्ट रूल्स एज पर विच द लिक्विडेटर इज टू फिक्स अ डेट ओन और बिफोर विच ओल क्रेडिटर्स ऑफ द कंपनी आर टू प्रूव देयर डेट्स और क्लेम्स एंड टू एस्टाब्लिश एनी टाइटल दे मे हैव टू प्रायोरिटी अंडर सेक्शन फाइव हंड्रेड थर्टी ऑफ द कंपनीज एक्ट नोट ओनली दिस द रूल्स इनेबल अ क्रेडिटर टू क्लेम इंटरेस्ट अप टू द डेट ऑफ द वाइंडिंग अप ऑर्डर एंड इन सर्टेन सर्कमस्टांसिस पेमेंट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट सब्सिक्वेंट टू द डेट ऑफ वाइंडिंग अप देर इज हाव एवर एन एक्सेप्शन टू द टू फोल्ड मैथड एज हैज बीन हेल्ड इन देना बैंक वर्सिज बी पी पारेख एंड कंपनी एंड अदर्स विच वी विल सब्सिक्वेंटली एल्यूसीडेट This brings us to the interpretation of the expressions debt due and debt due and payable in section 531A of the Companies Act. The interpretation is no longer debatable in view of the judgment of this court in Raj Ratha Narayan Bhai Mills Company Limited versus Sales Tax Officer. Perry, which has approved the view taken by D. A. Desai Judge in his judgment in Sales Tax Officer Perry v. R. N. Mills Company Limited and another, a judgment which we respectfully submit forms the foundation of our reasoning and ratio in the present case. This court in R N Mills Company Limited, agreeing with the views expressed by D A Desai Judge in Sales Tax Officer Perry, overruled the judgment of the Division Bench under challenge for several reasons. To hold that the words debt due occurring in the first part and the words as such here, therefore. for a government debt to be covered under clause a to section 531 of the companies act it must not only be a debt due but it must also be a debt due and payable within 12 months next before the relevant date the requirements of the later portion of clause a to section 531 of the companies act are dual and cumulative which is debt due and payable and note one that is due the debt due must have become payable at any time within 12 months next before the relevant date the debt due and payable prior to 12 months next to the relevant date 
is not a preferential debt in terms of section 531a of the companies act such debt will rank pari passu with ordinary or unsecured creditors without any preferential treatment in this regard we quote the following passages from the decision of this court in rn mills company limited as such we have gone through both the judgments afore referred to very carefully and minutely and have heard learned counsel on the conflicting decisions there are wide ranging discussions in the interpretative process relating to the word due occurring in the earlier part of the provision and the words due and payable in the later part and whether they are different expressions meant to convey differently or they mean the same thing with due respect to the high court we feel that relevant and important considerations and material though available which could go to interpret the section purposefully was overlooked and at this juncture we wish to put it to use in a ramayas the companies act it has been noticed that section 530 of the companies act 1956 has been largely recast and amended in the light of the following recommendations of the company law committee in paragraph 218 of their report in this connection we should like to refer to a memorandum that we received from the central board of revenue on the question of a priority to be given to crown demands generally and in particular to arrears of income tax super tax and corporation tax it was suggested that there should be no time limit for the preferential payment of these crown debts and that section 230 of the indian companies act should be amended accordingly the practical difficulty of giving effect to the suggestion is that it would place a great majority of the unsecured creditors of the company at the mercy of the income tax authorities in as much as whatever may be the nature of the security on which they may have lent money stop